Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is The Edge of Adventure. Of course, my name is Adam Asher. And of course, it's great to have you with us as we travel around the world to meet people, to get to know organizations that are doing amazing things, serving other people. And today is no exception in that regard. We're going to get to know Bill McCarthy. He's the director at Southwest Indian Foundation, an organization that works here in my home country of the United States of America. And so first off, Bill, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Adam, and uh, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, it's a great opportunity for our organization, and, and thank you for reaching out. We really appreciate it. Well, this is something we have been looking forward to, my team and I. This is a very um, special type work that you do, and it's one that's near and dear to, to my heart and to, to the heart of so many people, too, on my team. And so we thought for this very special week, of course, here in the U.S., this week is Thanksgiving week, and it's special. It's always special. And so we thought we would do something special as well as it relates to the topic of today's conversation. So uh, there you are, a director at this organization. You've been there for so many years. I know you have a heart and for this. I think you've been there for 34 years, if my research is correct. And... I want, first and foremost, for you to put it into perspective for the listeners and the viewers, Southwest Indian Foundation focuses on helping whom? So uh, our organization has been concentrating for, you know, over 50 years on trying to lessen the poverty uh, among the Native American tribes of the Southwest, principally the the Navajo and the Zuni and the Hopi, although we do uh, we work with other tribes, not not as extensively, but but we do work with uh, with mostly the Navajo, roughly two hundred thousand uh, tribal members, and those are in our immediate uh, locale, which is right around Gallup, New Mexico. And what are the the needs again i've i've done research here and there are i have very extensive notes of so many different areas i want to get into because you guys are so very thorough so very thorough about the things that you do and and the ways that you love the people that you serve but the one of the themes that that continues to come out as i've uh, gotten to know you guys is this concept of self help what do you mean when you say self help well and, and you perhaps heard the uh, the the maxim if you if you give a man a fish you feed him for the day if you teach a man to fish you feed him for a lifetime is that that's the basic concept of of uh, organization tries to tries to provide opportunities uh, through education through job opportunities and through training uh, not that we have all the answers by any means but we uh, we work with principally younger people to help them cultivate uh, an understanding and appreciation not only of their own culture, but even the, uh, the quote, the white man's world where they can go out and through, through our contacts and, and our, our catalog and our website to, uh, to make a living. So the idea is to walk in both worlds that have uh, appreciation for their own culture and their own heritage, but also be able to amalgamate and to, to make a living in the modern world. Expand on that just a little bit, the importance of being a full participating member of the modern world, the importance of that, while also the importance of maintaining your history and your heritage well and and i don't know how much you know about our location uh adam but the uh and we'll talk a little bit about the navajo people they uh they live in in poverty um of over 50 percent of the population the navajo people live in poverty below the poverty level uh the the geographical area that the Navajo people live on is about the state size of the state of uh, West Virginia, over 10,000 square miles geographically. It's extremely barren. It's extremely remote. 
uh, there, there's not ver much in the way of infrastructure, uh, roads passable, roads running water, electricity. So it really is a uh, third world environment you know, within the continental United States. And a lot of people are not aware of that. So a lot of people do that come through our part of the country and spend any time in uh, in Navajo land are usually shocked at, at the conditions and the hardship of the people. And then, of course, the distances are great. So you may have 50 miles between one little village, one little clan area and another. So that requires uh, an additional hardship of, of traveling for essentials on sometimes impassable roads, especially in the winter months. My guest today here on the Edge of Adventure is Bill McCarthy. He is the director at Southwest Indian Foundation. If you're watching the video version, there you see it on the screen, Southwest Indian Foundation. And you can look them up online at southwestindian.com. Lots to get to in this conversation. Don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about some very uh, innovative and important projects that they have. But, you know, I always take these conversations. I let these conversations go where they need to go when they need to go. And the thing that keeps jumping out at me here as I listen to you talk is I, I want to know if you've been doing this for 34 years, that this organization is making an impact. I know that any, any time you, you spend this long doing something and you put as much of your heart and soul into it, there's a love that uh, drives you. And tell me about your love for the native peoples of our country. Well, it's um, they've grown to tolerate me after 34 years, uh, uh, Adam. That's where you know I came as a relatively young man to to these parts, and I um, I've just grown in uh, in admiration, respect, and genuine affection. Uh, you use the term love, and I think I think that's accurate. I um, we have all of our employee base here is 100%, almost 100% full-blooded native, uh, and I'm I'm the exception. But um, I've uh, I think in especially over probably the last 15 to 20 years, I've become almost like family, and so I can't think of any anything differently other than that these uh, these are these are part of my of my extended family and and I'm extremely passionate uh, coming to work I have no trouble coming to work every day I love what I do I consider myself to be a very blessed uh, individual by having this work and uh, as long as I can continue to you know shoulder a load and can truly contribute I, I plan on doing this as long as I'm able Bill McCarthy is my guest today here on the Edge of the Venture. <laughs> That's you. That's you. And we're talking uh, Southwest Indian Foundation. Look them up at southwestindian.com. Let's go back to the founding. You've been here for a long time, I think, again, 34 years, if my uh, calculations are correct. And you have been involved in the, the renewing and some of the new direction in more recent times of this organization. And we're going to get into that as we talk about um, ways that even the listeners and, and the viewers can participate and support you guys in, in some cool ways. But before we do that, walk us back to the founding of the organization, Southwest Indian Foundation, who founded it and what were the motives? So um, just if, if uh, back in the late 1960s, uh, this part of the United States would really have been kind of like the old West. I mean, it was uh, the infrastructure now has expanded. And, and although we have a lot of, you know, places without any running, running water and power and that type of thing, it's, uh, it's really developed since the founding back in the late 60s. There was a, a Franciscan uh, a missionary, uh, Dunstan Schmiedlin. He was out of the Cleveland area, and he <clears throat> he was serving the people out here, you know, in his priestly capacity. But he recognized that there were there were like essential needs that were not taken care of, and uh, he, through uh, friends of his. Uh, uh, 
they started dr actually drilling water wells. He had a, he had a friend who's the water table is usually about a thousand feet below the surface. That's very common. So drilling a, a well of that depth, of course, is a real challenge. And he had friends that they, and they started drilling wells and then they recognized that many of the people had to go around great distances to get into town because there were, weren't were adequate bridges. And so through other friends and associations, they started acquiring steel that had been left out in the South Pacific by the U.S. Navy during the Second World War that was never used to invade uh, Japan and those uh, those girders and, and steel products were ba brought back to our area and we started building bridges in the uh, late 1960s and the early 1970s and we were actually one of the the only organizations uh, that were actually in in the mail uh, we were probably one of the first 10 or a dozen organizations that started doing direct mail um, you know, some people consider that junk mail, but but um, back in the in the late 1960s. So that's how we got started. Bill, one of the things that your website, for example, helps to drive home as people get to know your organization is the importance of offering a hand and not a hand out. OK, I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about that as you introduce us to a few of the ways that you are serving these people. So uh, one, one of the things that you, you, you mentioned, uh, Adam, is offering a hand up rather than a hand out. And I think, uh, and this is true of, of human dignity across the world, would be if someone is just being fed uh, without any type of, of parameters, uh, the, the, it, it's, it can be demeaning because you're just basically feeding without a person having uh, a purpose in life or having a vocation, whatever term you want to call it. But we, we know that every human being has innate talents. Uh, everybody has different talents and everybody's totally, in, uh, they're unique individual, but they, everybody has something to offer. And that certainly would be true of, uh, of the native people of the Southwest. In fact, they're incredibly talented. Uh, they're great artists. And that's one of the reasons we've kind of delved into our, our crafts and our catalog. So, um, many of the challenges to uh, to the native people in the Southwest is they just don't have one of two things. They don't have uh, uh, access to sometimes a good education, a quality education, number one. And the other thing is that they don't have uh, opportunities, uh, business opportunities, professional opportunities, vocational opportunities. So we try to address those two areas, provide them um, with training and, and decent education to uh, to work out, draw out those unique talents, and then the opportunity to showcase those talents. One of the ways that they can showcase these talents and also one of the ways that you've helped to uh, address the need for revenue generation and um, uh, employment for these families is what? Tell us about, and I'm going to, if you're watching the video version, I'm going to pull the website up on the screen and you'll actually get to see some of this, but I'm not going to steal your thunder. Bill, tell us about this project. Oh, okay. Well, and, and I just, I have, I have our most recent catalog here now because we're trying to catch up on some back orders, but we, uh, we work with literally uh, thousands of artists in our area that provide unique, mostly uh, handmade items that in many cases are cottage industries where uh, there's silversmithing and basket weaving and and different types of food products. Uh, we're, we're, we're delving into uh, areas where there are handcrafted kachina dolls, pottery, uh, silversmithing, uh, uh, just rug, rug weaving, you, you name it. The, all of the, the, the crafts, the traditional handcrafts that have been done in this part of the world for going back at least 100 years, we've tried to uh, not only 
to preserve those those arts and crafts, restore them, but then showcase them so that and make them available to people that might be interested as a as a unique and uh, tr truly uh, uh, a work of art, an individual work of art, each piece. And uh, so that's that's a, a, a one of the main thrusts of, of our organization. It does and, and that that does four things. Number one, it provides a job and we pay, uh, you know, obviously our artisans for their work. It uh, it preserves the, the skill set and the uh, the uniqueness of 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 this particular type of of trade and artistic form. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is the person that receives it has a constant reminder of, of their brothers and sisters in the Southwest and the work that we continue to do. So there's a bond that, re, that develops between the recipient and, and the artist. And then the final thing is that uh, the proceeds from these uh, transactions, these sales, uh, then the, those proceeds will go back into our charitable work and our charitable programs. You're listening to The Edge of Adventure. My name is Adam Asher, and that's the voice of Bill McCarthy. He's the director at Southwest Indian Foundation. You can look him up online, and you actually have been seeing their website, part of their website anyway, the catalog portion at southwestindian.com, southwestindian.com. And uh, as I think about all the things that are w wonderful about what you do and this project of the uh, the products being created, it, one of the things that I think is important is that it is a way to preserve in some form or fashion some of the wonderful elements of the Native Americans' history. And that's important. And my guess is for you and your, your team, that's an element of what you do that is also important. I mean, it's, you're helping these people in today's world with today's issues and the needs that they have today at the same time with this respect and appreciation for who they are and their own history. Talk to me briefly about some of that. Well, I'm, this could be couched in, in uh, I guess, uh, the term cottage industries. Uh, a lot of, uh, of our, our artists and our makers live in very remote areas out in the middle of, you know, canyons and, and you know, rocky areas far from a, a paved road. So they, uh, their work is actually you know, within their home they will acquire a lot of the the things they they need to 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 work on their arts and crafts make it at the, in their home and then uh when they have enough of their wares to to bring to town they, it's this has been going on for many many years they used to take them to what we would call you know traditional trading posts and that's where trade would be done sometimes even in barter form instead of uh, use, using cash you know sometimes uh, products would be brought in for you know foods and and water and, and essentials of life that's uh, that's kind of changed over to a more of a cash economy over the last 50 years or so but it's this is a, essential for their livelihood so these these skills have been you know handed on from one generation to another and like everything in our modern world we're, we're losing a lot of our our traditions uh you know that goes those all across the planet but so this is a it's a it's a it's a good thing we think because it's preserving a culture, preserving a way of life, but also tying one generation to the previous generation, which uh, has value in and of itself. Bill, what would be some of the other areas that the foundation, Southwest Indian Foundation, is helping this population? I know that there are some things that would get classified as emergency relief or in some of these other areas, including access to medical care, so on and so forth. Um, walk us through, you know, some of that side of, of all that you do as well. 
Right. Uh, and, and although, uh, Adam, we do uh, kind of encourage and try to cultivate uh, self-preservation and and independence, self-sufficiency, there are some uh, cases where that's just not possible, where you have people that, uh, for no fault of their own, they're they're disabled or they're extremely sick or they have an elderly person that lives in usually a traditional uh, Navajo dwelling will be one room. So the Hogan is uh, a traditional Navajo dwelling that is the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, uh, the, the the bedroom, you know, and, and, and the bathroom, you know. So, so uh, and a lot of times there's multiple generations that will live within that one family unit. So, a, a lot of times there's there's just situations where there's a desperate need and I'll, and as as mentioned before most of the of the people live below the poverty level so we have an emergency fund um, that we have um, ongoing uh, during covid last year we did uh, multiple uh, uh, deliveries to family units every day. Uh, we had trucks rolling out of here with water, food supplies, sanitation that would, would because people could not actually get into Gallup, New Mexico. So we would take uh, the deliveries, the emergency, emergency assistance to the chapter houses, the local areas where people could come if they could get out. And then in cases where uh, someone may have had COVID and they were housebound and the elderly that were in ex, you know, extreme danger, we would actually make deliveries to their individual uh, housing units, the Hogans. This is a Thanksgiving special for <laughs> the Edge of Adventure. And it, there's the world, our nation, the people that you work with, we've all been through so much, so much over the last um, couple of years. It's it's, um, it, and yet there remains so there remain so many things that we have to be thankful for, as it relates to this opportunity that you have, Bill, to work with these amazing people. What are you thankful for? Well, I'm I'm thankful that I can talk in complete sentences, but but you know that's where um, no I, I I thought it might be worth mentioning, and, and and you and I you're an astute educated man, but um, Squan you you've heard of Squanto, and the Squ Squanto was uh, is actually the inspiration for the very first Thanksgiving, and a lot of Americans are not are not even aware of that fact. Squanto was a, uh, a native uh, who lived on the East Coast. He has a really long, there's a long history. It's worth studying, you know, his life, uh, you know, has value itself. But he had been sold into slavery and had been taken to Spain and, and went through all these adventures and learned, learned uh, English and was, was brought back and, and uh, would travel along the Eastern seaboard. So when the the original pilgrims arrived at Plymouth Rock, 1621, I think was the date. Uh, the uh, Squanto, they, they could, they, they didn't, have, they were freezing through the first winter and would not have have made it. Squanto, uh, out of the goodness of his heart, taught them how to do winter planting, use uh, certain fertilizing methods with with fish. Uh, taught them to uh, grow corn, basically kept them alive through that first uh, uh, extremely bitter and brutal winter. Uh, and they did, so the first uh, uh, Thanksgiving was in celebration, in part uh, was a, a, a Thanksgiving to Squanto, as well as, you know, for all the other blessings, just uh, because they were able to survive that, that, first winter in the new world. One of the things as well that I've noticed from the perspective that you have, you and your team at Southwest Indian Foundation, is this overall perspective that this is, this is something 
that we're all in together. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I mean, I think it's it's certainly true. It's your can be your world vision or your your belief system, whatever term that you would like to use. But you know, we we are not islands. You know, we're not entire to ourselves. You know, we're a part of of broader humanity, and so we. And I, and I think this is this is my own view, and I, I think it's it's shared by a lot of people that we're we're uh, uh, at least in part uh, responsible for the health and welfare for of those uh, that are around us and and those that we come in contact with. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're we're without faults. Uh, the contrary, it's because we have um, underbellies and we we have we, you know we. We have defects of character, and we have we have things that we have to deal with on a daily basis in dealing with ourselves. And one of the ways that we help ourselves is by helping others. And this this is very much a, a you know the the traditional idea from you know Saint Francis of Assisi uh, that it's in giving that we receive and that we if by by extending ourselves and not focusing and being self-absorbed by helping others, we end up helping ourselves. And that's also a, a, a very much a, a Native American concept is that well, they're very communal and, and they believe that we help the whole tribe. And we don't, when they're not in, in individualistic in that way, that everybody is, is a part of the family. And when I help my brother, my sister, my aunt, my grandmother, I am helping myself. So the circle, it becomes complete. If that makes any sense. It sure does. <laughs> it sure does. We're talking today with Bill McCarthy. He is the director at Southwest Indian Foundation. Let me pull up the website again. If you're watching on the video version, you'll see it now. Southwestindian.com. Southwestindian.com. You'll get to learn a little bit more about their foundation. And also, as we were looking at some of the products and as I uh, conduct the interview, also pulling up some uh, items on the screen, just to give you guys a, a, a peek at all the different things that they have to offer. And I literally, there's pages and pages and pages of of products that you can purchase and know that you're um, honoring their tradition, you're honoring who they are, and you're also helping the foundation, Southwest Indian Foundation, to help the these people. And what a wonderful way that they do. They do it with this concept of a hand up and not a hand out. I know as well, just for the, for the sake of the audience, you guys also, you have school grants, you have initiatives where you've helped provide um, products like wood stoves and things like that to those who don't have them. Tell me, tell me about some of those initiatives as well. I mean, those are those are things that, when you get right down to it, that affects a family in a in a, a tremendous way. Right. So, or a kind of similar in some in some ways to like a Habitat for Humanity. Uh, there's a, a probably between 10 and 12,000 uh, how housing unit shortage uh, on on the reservation so we we build 20 homes roughly 15 last year with covid we didn't build as many because we our workforce couldn't get into town but we build homes for those families that would have no way to have a home without outside assistance so we take the bottom you know, 10 to 15 percent of the native people, and there are many of them are, of course, under the poverty level. But we take the, the poorest of the poor, and we identify those families, and then we we're building homes uh, 12 months out of the year in a manufacturing warehouse. A lot of times, um, we'll we'll put a handicap access ramp or special doors if it's a if it's a small family we may build a one bedroom home if it's a large family we've built up to four bedrooms homes homes so we we basically custom uh and with flexibility we, we we custom design according to the need of the particular situation at hand so 
usually when we build a home, we will put in a full heating unit, which is a cooking and as well as a heating stove. Uh, we have an ongoing program that we put in roughly 200 to 250 uh, stoves a year, and some of those are in in units that already exist. But but in our the the houses that we build ourselves, we 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 install stoves. Uh, so uh, this is an uh, ongoing program that we've been we've been building homes now for about 25 years, and and we're placing those as weather permits where we can actually haul the homes, the manufactured homes to the site and we prepare with a foundation and plop them down, put them together and, and hand over the keys. Bill, as we think about the week, again, I've mentioned already that this is the Thanksgiving week. This is um, a time in our country, the United States of America, where we uh, think about the things we're thankful for. And, and yet we are also aware that holidays, and now we're headed into this holiday season, we're aware of the fact that sometimes the holidays are tough. It, and sometimes it, you know, we're, we're confronted or reminded about the things that we no longer have. That's just unfortunate about the holidays sometimes is while they can be wonderful, they can also be a, a sad time where we're again reminded of things that we used to have and don't have anymore. So I would, I'd love you to speak to the person out there today who might feel like they've been left behind. Okay. Well, and, and uh, we're all, and I, and I know we're going through a lot of tough times, even, you know, in the more affluent parts of the country right now. But these, um, you know, our, our people are the first Americans, um, and, and the Navajo people go back, you know, centuries and centuries uh, before, you know, the Europeans landed, you know, uh, on our soil here. But um, mo many of our families don't don't even have adequate Christmas. So one of one of the programs we do this time of year is that we uh, we provide uh, food baskets, which basically we deliver uh, close to 2,000 food baskets to the poorest of the poor, families that really would not have a holiday period at all. And, and if they had a holiday, it would be extremely meager. So we put together uh, food enough for a family of four, um, uh, for a week. So if there are larger families, we'll expand, expand that with usually with a, a turkey and good nutritious food and, and vegetables and fruits with, and, and we're, there are children in, in the household, we provide, uh, a, a toy and and a stocking with with some goodies, you know, so like a traditional Christmas stocking, and and that's uh, we identify those families through working with healthcare professionals and uh, the missions and people, social service directors, etc. People that actually know the locale and know the families and know those that are that are truly in in need, and so. About 10 days before uh, Christmas Day, we'll start delivering to uh, central locations where families can come in so that we know at least everyone uh, that we're aware of um, in, you know, this large geographical area will have something of, of a holiday. Uh, um, and that's that's a program we've been doing for uh, since before I showed up, not on the same scale, but but now I think last year we had over over 1,800 food baskets, and we'll do roughly the same this year. Bill McCarthy is my guest today, joining me from Southwest Indian Foundation. Look him up online at southwestindian.com. And again, his name is Bill McCarthy. He's the director there and has been with the organization in some form or fashion for quite some time and uh, cares about the people with whom he works very much. You know my name. My name is Adam Asher. And you know this is a Thanksgiving special of the Edge of Adventure. And we're uh, doing this because we are also thankful, very thankful for the work of this foundation and for all those organizations out there that work 
with the Native American populations. And we are thankful for those populations, those people as well. We're thankful for their, their traditions and their past. And um, we're thankful for um, groups uh, throughout the world, but also here in, in our country that give a hand up, not a handout necessarily, but a hand up uh, whenever possible to, to those who in some form or fashion have been left behind. And we appreciate that about Bill McCarthy and Southwest Indian Foundation. How can listeners or viewers that are tuning in today, how can they help? Well, we, we have a, a, a couple ways. Um, one would be that uh, if, if there's anything on the website that, uh, that you like, um, of course, you can order it. We're buried in orders right now. And uh, you talk about Thanksgiving, um, Adam. We're, we're very grateful that uh, that we seem to have a lot of people right now where they it cannot uh, access certain gifts uh, from overseas. There's a supply chain problem where people are having trouble uh, importing uh, goods. So uh, we're very fortunate to have the opportunity. Most of our uh, our merchandise is, is made here locally. And as long as uh, our artists can re receive the the materials to ma to make the goods, we're able to to produce and have things available. So much of our our, our wares uh, are are in stock, and uh, there seems to be a run right now. So we have limited capacity here. We have limited room, and we're trying to keep everybody safe because uh, uh, COVID really uh, hits uh, the native population seemingly harder for whatever reason than it does uh, the Anglo and Hispanic populations. So we're, we're, uh, we're cognizant of trying to keep everyone as, as safe as possible, and we're bringing in workers um, in a way that we're not we're not on top of one another. And so we, we're trying to, it's a balancing act. So we're trying to get to every single order as quickly as we can, but as safely as we can. So if there, if you can, if you go on site, I mean, we're, we're, we're filling orders today that we took on Sunday, which was 36 hours ago. So we're not really far behind, but we're starting to get busier each and every day. And, and with that, it's going to be more and more challenge, challenging to keep up. With the, with the order. So that that's some good news. So if you like anything, and I obviously we're, we're able, we'll be able to fill it before the end of the year, but if you order today, but uh, also like in the case of the Christmas food basket or a, a, a heating stove or helping us to build a house or a, a ramp or provide a scholarship for for a young person for a child or training in uh, buildings trades like we we do have a program there we teach uh, young people how to do carpentry and electrical and plumbing and just you know basically blue collar skill sets uh, that that are valuable no matter what your profession is we have that ongoing pro program in, in 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 that way so there are many ways that you can help either through uh uh, purchasing or or uh, donating, and uh, we even have people that send blankets uh, or coats or that type of thing where they don't they don't have cash to contribute, but they may have other ways that they can help. Um, now that we have a new farm, <laughs> we're also we're looking we're looking for old old uh, tractors or pickup trucks or that type of thing. So we're we're uh, or you you know people have been sending me seeds now that they know we have a farm so that we have something to plant. But I I mean I'm going on and on. But 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 uh, there are many many ways that that people can help if they would like to. Well, thank you, Bill. Tell me though about this farm, uh, a new farm. What what's the story? Yeah. No, it's it's a it's an it's an interesting story. I mean, it was something like right out of ancient ways. We, um, I was, uh, we're driving up in the Zuni Mountains on another project uh, with a friend of mine, and 
he lived up there for five generations uh, uh, in the Zuni Mountains and, and was showing me some of the ancient sites where an old, you know, school building was and blah, blah. And, uh, and uh, we came across this beautiful uh, prime cut piece of farmland, which, which is a rarity up there. And uh, this, this gentleman had been farming for, for a number of years. And he said, does that look like a for sale sign there, Bill? And I see he about fell out of his chair. And he says, I've been looking at this property for over 60 years. And uh, uh, one thing led to another. And we were able to, through back channels and talking to uh, to this this family there the the members of this family were getting much older and they couldn't look after the property so uh um one thing led to another and we were able to uh, procure this farm property so now we're growing a lot of pro produce that we can uh, provide to the soup kitchens and the food pantries and to really under under nourish families so it's it's providing us a great opportunity not only so to help us with our assistance but also we're learning how to farm grow our own food and teaching young people uh, how how to grow their own food so it's been a it's been a great opportunity, and we're only we're only about nine months in right now. So we're we are novices, but we uh, we had a we had a primo we had a primo garden and growing some great stuff at at high uh, altitude, about seven thousand feet above sea level. That sounds like a wonderful project, very timely, and ladies and gentlemen, you can tell. Like I mean. Bill is a man in demand here. He's got a lot going on. The phone was ringing. You heard that. He's he's um, <laughs> taken time out of this day to spend some time with us. And what a wonderful uh, opportunity it is. I've got a couple uh, sort of more um, philosophical questions because that's the kind of guy I, I am. I want, to, uh, oh, I want you to speak to the potential of every individual. Well, you know, that's where I, and I was just looking, I looked you up, Adam, and I saw that you've, you know, you have a very adventurous life and uh, I want your job. And I was, a little, I was a little envious looking at your portfolio. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I feel blessed with, with my own life, but um, you, I think it comes to discovering yourself um and, and, and that may not to sound, you know, like a new age guy or anything of that nature, but we, we all have great potential. Uh, no, we're, 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 we're totally unique and we're, uh, everyone has gifts. And my experience is that everyone has a sufficient, at least a sufficient amount of intelligence um, where I think we lack uh, we and, and we could have struggles in this life is number one if we if if we lack direction or if we get derailed with uh, with problems like substance abuse or or destructive uh, tendencies but if if you can if you can find your niche in life find your lane and you and you go with that and you, you pursue it and you persevere uh, uh, people have incredible potential um and i and i'm uh, i must say that uh so many people uh, unfortunately don't don't find themselves and don't find that that potential and and their their go ergo their life is is not fulfilled and they're not they tend not to be not to be happy and and i don't know if that was what you were you were fishing for adam but that I, I see that in you, and I'm not just buttering you up. I, I see that you're you're a man who loves his work, and you have a great life. Well, I'm always fishing for something. You know what? That's my job over here. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm always fishing here for something. <laughs> but but you know it it's uh and that that's why I ask these philosophical type <laughs> questions because you know I see in in the different people that come on the show, and you know I see in you these things that sort of make you tick and the things you're passionate about and the things you've, you've given your life for and toward. And then I also know that everything you just said is, is so true. I mean, I also know that we all at some point or another, we deal with that question and we, it, it's a, it can feel like a barrier that's, that's hard to get past where 
what am I supposed to do? You know, maybe, maybe I do feel empty. Maybe I'm not satisfied. That's one of the reasons why I always say beyond status quo. That's my one of my uh, mantras, I guess. And it's because the status quo really isn't enough. It's not enough for most of us. We want something more. We crave something more. And it's not the same for any of us. Your calling is different from mine. It's different from the next person's. Absolutely. But when we are brave and we undertake that adventure and we go out there and we push beyond the status quo, some amazing things happen and they can be very, very fulfilling. So thanks for um, my, participating in my fishing expedition there. Okay. <laughs> so now I, I've got another, <laughs> another question for you. And these, these things are taken by, I'm not, these are not random questions. These are taken from the research that I do as I prepare for these. Can, can something be rugged and be beautiful? Absolutely. Um, you might be referring to the terrain in, in our area. Uh, it's uh, what you would call rugged, rugged beauty. Um, I've, uh, personally walked, uh, you know, as an, I'm a bit of an adventurer myself, I've walked about 3,000 miles across mostly Western Europe, uh, mostly on the Camino de Santo de Compostela. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm something of a seasoned hiker, and uh, I've seen all kinds of terrain, just, uh, and I've gone over mountains. I, I, I walked over the Pyrenees a couple times during snowstorms. I mean, and and lived to tell the tale. But every part of the United, uh, every part of the world has its own unique um, qualities and and beauty. Um, I guess you would say about. Uh, the desert southwest. It's high desert, so we're at a high uh, uh, elevation, high altitude. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's just incredibly beautiful. The colors and the mesas and the landscapes and the you know the the, the rocks. I mean, even the, the rocks are beautiful. Uh, the formations, the uh, uh, stalactite type of, uh, you know, formations. It's just, and for those of you who have driven across, uh, the, the old West, I mean, right here in town is the old El Rancho hotel where they used to, all the stars would, would stay when they were filming the old, the old Westerns. And, uh, and that there, there is, there is kind of a, a fascination, uh, with the old cowboy and Indian, uh, type of mystique. And it still does does exist today. So um, it is a beautiful part of the world in its own in its own unique way. This is the Edge of Adventure, and we are getting close to the end of today's episode. We're talking with Bill McCarthy. He's the director at Southwest Indian Foundation. You can look them up online at southwestindian.com. You'll find them on Facebook and, of course, if you want to connect with them, and you always go to their website, southwestindian.com. And of course, the other thing that I do with all of all of these podcasts is I create the different posts on the edgeofadventure.com so that you're able to go there. And if you ever lose track of, of um, the details that we talk about in the show, you can always go back to the edgeofadventure.com, look them up in the, in the podcast section, and you'll find all the links there, including the links to their organization and in this case, to their store. And so uh, as you think about that as, uh, I don't know, potential gifts, I'm not trying to sell them. Look, you, you do what you want, guys. Support them any way you feel called. And it could be in a small way. It could be in a big way. But if it touched your heart today to to hear Bill talk and, and think about the work that they do, then my request of you is, uh, first of all, encourage them, reach out to them, um, let them know that you see them and you appreciate what they're doing. And then if there's some other way to help them out, please consider doing so. All right. Well, um, I think we'll we'll wrap up. I mean, if there's anything else that, that needs to be communicated, please uh, please let me know if there's something I haven't asked about. Uh, but, but other than that, I would – we'll, we'll, so it's a two-pronged question. Anything we need to know about the organization, okay, that I haven't covered? And then I suppose my final question is – what do you, 
have a very unique perspective. You have a very unique position and you've been doing this for a long time. Speak to those of us out here that don't have your perspective on Native American culture and Native American history. And if it's not really a fair question to say to put it all in, you know, boil it all down to one to one answer or one response. But what do we need to know about these wonderful people? So that my two prong question for my guest, Bill McCarthy. Well, and 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 finally, and thank you, Adam, for having me on. I it's 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 a privilege and an honor, sincerely. Um, <clears throat> one thing I I've, that I've kind of discovered, and it's you know, this is your education never stops. I mean, you're we're constantly learning. I, I apologize for all the background that's going on here. Uh, things are there's a lot of activity here, but um, it's. It's what we don't know. Ignorance is 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 actually the enemy in many regards. Uh, a lot of our prejudices and our our uh, our kind of preconceived notions are people of people are out of ignorance, and and a lot of people may not know anything about uh, native culture at all. I mean, they just never been exposed to it. They've never studied it. So it's a whole unique world. It's a completely. Um, it's it's ours as as I guess we would call ourselves modern American. Uh, we we don't know our history, uh, and, and we really don't know ourselves all that well unless we know our history. And our history is 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 connected to those who went before us. And and on the walking on this soil, um, we, it was always the Native American. Now now even, even starting from back east, where a lot of those tribes were were snuffed out and driven out and and forced to the west and and that that kept expanding uh the desert southwest is is one of the areas in the country where basically na native culture has been been kept and preserved and now it's it's someone honored so it's it's a whole world it's a whole treasure and you can you can spend um, you can spend your whole life studying it, and so I just encourage people. Just even if it's, it's not, you know, a main plank of your of your of your interest, it's something that you should at least study um, in part or know something about. The other thing I, I think uh, that we should all look at is to your theme about Thanksgiving of all those things that we can take for granted. Um, you know, we have, most of us have 10 fingers and 10 toes, and we can breathe properly. Uh, we've suffered here where COVID attacks the lungs, and we've lost uh, people that are very close to us. You know, I've employees and their families and extended families where all of a sudden you can't breathe. I mean, people... Uh, uh, their lungs are attacked and their ability, their respiratory system where they can't, just the fact that you wake up in the morning and you're sucking oxygen into your body that preserves you. That is something to be thankful for. Just the least little things, every element of every second of every day is a gift. And, and I need to refocus on that myself. You know, and I, I think we need to do. And when we when we have that gratitude, uh, where we, we we appreciate, we tend to appreciate others and their plights and their challenges or hardships or difficulties. And that's certainly the case uh, with the native people in the Southwest. You know, so um, it's just it's a different viewpoint. It's a different perspective. But it's it harkens back to I think the angels of our better nature. If we, uh, it wouldn't it be a wonderful world if everybody uh, had a selfless attitude and looked after their brothers and sisters before they can, you know, looked after themselves or or looked after others on an equal basis of looking after the, the themselves. Uh, uh, we would be in a much better uh, world. And uh, anyway, that's that's my final thought. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill. I am honored to have had you on the show and to now consider you a friend. And this is exactly what needed to happen this week. We needed to right. stop and uh, be thankful and talk about a wonderful organization that I'm thankful for and the work that you guys do for a people 
that we're thankful for, for a heritage as a part of this country as an American. And I know I've got people that watch the show from all over the world, and that's the the greatest compliment that could ever be paid to me is, is that people from all different cultures and languages and, and parts of the world join in this thing that we call the Edge of Adventure. And we're all different. We all have this unique piece of our history. And there's the good and the bad and in our heritage and they're in our own lives, you know, in our own lives. There have been good things and bad things that have happened, but we do have a lot to be thankful for. And we love the native American population in this country very much and very much so. And to uh, to pause to just remember that and honor you guys was uh, kind of uh, the thanks, heart. Thanks a million, sincerely, Adam. And it was great to get to know you a little bit. And and I'm always here if you ever want to visit. Okay. Well, listen. It's, I will. I'll be uh, I'll be knocking on on your door there behind that busy <laughs> busy office. Like if you if you're watching the video version, you can see the activity at that they are busy and they are getting stuff done and what a wonderful thing this has been bill mccarthy director at the southwest indian foundation look him up at southwestindian.com and join us again next time for the edge of adventure bye-bye now